All right, the American League Central. I want to start with uh, the three teams that have immense enjoyment, then the team that's kind of fun, kind of frisky, and then we'll end with the White Sox. The Cleveland Guardians. Um, I did an idea guy. It's a position for me, okay. and we've just – I'm beating a dead horse with this position. But all I wrote down – and I've got like – I've got a couple sentences on each team. The Guardians, all I wrote down is the shortstop, question mark, question mark, question mark. Whoever plays you know, shortstop is the X factor. Uh, fair enough, dude. Like, we've talked about on the call-up of Angel Martinez and how he's looked good. Like, does that – does he take second base and, and force Andre Semenez over to shortstop? Now yeah. it seems like maybe not. I don't know. Does Brian Rocchio ever get the keys? It doesn't seem like it. Uh, Gabriel Arias, like, yeah, he's a safe option for now, but he's been underwhelming. Uh, and – also one of those guys that you always he's got the nba effect going on eris is 24 just turned 24 <laughs> like that's the nba okay, effect right now. uh was it the 2022 postseason where he played first base yes yeah mind-blowing when he did that i'm like yeah, defense is the thing like yeah, defense, yeah, what are we doing he's good at it but you know I, I think that's an awesome answer um i also kind of feel the same way about center field up the middle is just a, is is a little bit of a head scratcher and I don't want to identify Miles Straw as, as an X factor, yeah. but I do want to identify center field because it, it, can DeLauder get up by the end of the year and help them? Uh, I, I don't think he's going to be up early in the year, but look, the way we've seen from DeLauder, the approach is great. The field of hits great. It, there's been a lot of impressive things in spring training. I, I could subscribe to the belief that by July, he's ready to go. He finished the year in double A, also played in the Arizona fall. He yeah. put up numbers everywhere. But maybe Foreal plugs in there. Maybe Tyler Freeman plugs in there. So Freeman, Freeman has looked good yeah. this spring. I will also say in bags too. What do you get from Will Brennan too? Can Will Brennan mm -hmm. play center field? He, all these guys have more impact than Straw. Correct. All of them. Correct. And I, I think if any of them can show that, you know, that none of them are going to be Straw level defenders, but if they can be good defenders in center field, then it really gets hard to justify Straw. So I'm going to take the same kind of approach that you took yeah. and say center field because okay. I think it's equally, if not more important given their situation and they have so many different options. So can one of these guys make that leap up? I do also think you can make the case for um, the setup spot too. Yeah. And you can ID, ID who you think is the second best reliever in this bullpen, but look, I'm not going to doubt the guardians ability to identify relievers, but class a, it was a down year for him last year. And then, you know, it's, it's not quite murderers row. In, in the bullpen. You know, I, I thought moving Angel De Los Santos was bizarre. We're really weird. I didn't get that. And then, I mean, who's going to be the setup guy? Scott, according to Ross Resource, you got Scott Barlow. You got Sam Hen Hen uh, Henches. Henches. We love Nick Sandlin. If he's healthy, he's, he can be nasty. Yeah. But, you know, Eli Morgan, Tim Heron. I, I like these options, but, like, who's the setup guy? That'd be interesting to see. It'll be very interesting to see. Yeah. Um, Karen Chak. Karen Chak. Um, Shane Bieber. Who is he? Shane. Who is he? Who is he? This year, who is he? Uh, four, okay. I'm going to give you an innings number and an ERA number, and you tell me over or under. Okay. 135 innings for Shane Bieber. I'm going to go over. He's going to will his way over. He's just effective at 92. 91. Yeah. It's crazy. 3-8 ERA. Slightly under. I think he wills his way to both. Yeah but I feel very good with where I set those lines. No, those are good lines. I think it's going to be about 140, 145, 50 innings at a 3-6, three, 3-7. Three, and if he does I that, they're in that. good shape. And he might get a bag because yeah. he'll be doing it at 91. I hope he does. Um, I think one other name that you could identify if you just want to like not be position X factors and, yeah. and stick to the player thing, Bo Naylor. Uh -huh. I just think he can be one of the better young catchers in the game, yeah. um, which is saying a lot because there's some really good young catchers. He can hit for power. He's really improved defensively. He's fast. Yes, uh, He gets on base with the best of them. He, he's I think he, he, he's, an, he's as athletic yeah. of a catcher. He's the new age catcher. Yeah. He could be a monster, and that's a position that they got no production from until he came up last year. Yeah. Full season of Bo Naylor could be a difference maker for them. All right, the Minnesota Twins, uh, as we get into Minnesota – you know, the lineup, I was very tempted to say Carlos Correa, but I'm not going to because I just expect Correa to be much better than he was last year. I go to the rotation now. Um, for me, it's Chris Paddock. He's thrown 27 regular season innings in a Twins uniform since coming over from yeah. San Diego 
2021. In 2021, the last year that he threw 100 or more innings, he was not good. I think the ERA was over five, right? Yeah. And then he works his way back from TJ. I think it was TJ. Mm -hmm. If he is even showing trace amounts of what he had in 2019 when he burst onto the scene, I mean, they've got one of the stronger rotations in baseball. I would put them in the top half right now um, when it comes to Pablo, Ryan, Ober. I do like Louis Barland as a five. That I so like him a lot. So, okay, I've got the four. You've got the five. Barland's my X factor because I think he's got more potential. I do. At this I, point. I agree. I just think, like, we've already seen it from Paddock. Can he regain it? And he's, you know, he was flirting with triple digits last year, yeah. and, and he's super talented. And, um, you, you remember who he was traded for? Or who he came up with? Who uh, Marlins. Yeah. Do you know who he was traded for? Uh, no. 42-year-old Fernando Rodney. Hell yeah. Yeah. And he, he shot the bow and arrow. It was sick. Yeah, not for the Marlins. Um, he went from 0.62 ERA. It was like a 0.52 ERA to legitimately, I think, a, a five. And they didn't okay. even pick up the option in the, in the next year. But yeah, that was an all-time bad one, right? And Marlins fans knew it right when it went down. Yeah. But uh, I, for me, it's Marlins just because I, I think there's a little bit more unknown for better and, and for worse here with Varland. And and I think he's just a good arm, man. I, I, he's still kind of working to put it all together. The long ball has burned him at times, but he's got a pretty good arsenal. The fastball can get on. He kind of click. He throws hard. Uh, I, I think Varland could be one of the better fives if, if Paddock solidifies the four in, in baseball. I was thinking Bailey Ober. He's like a legit three this year. I don't, oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm already a so believer. He it. wasn't an X factor because what he showed last he's year. He's just a – yeah, like he, I he kind of bodied me last year, and oh my this God. year I'm not gonna body, I, he, I'm not gonna let him body me because I already think he's good. I, I, and and with Discofani, you know, on the shelf, I, I think it makes yeah. a lot of sense that, uh, you know, that that Barwin could be that guy. I do want to plug, but I don't know when he's gonna be healthy yet. But I do think he could actually be a, a unique X factor for this team in terms of like, you know, I, I think just a weapon that that can really be an option for them and, and, and help them in a lot of different ways is Matt Cantoreno. Mm -hmm. Had him on the call up and, you know, just a really awesome dude. But in terms of stuff, you're probably not going to find a guy outside the top 100 or just isn't ranked as a top prospect with better stuff than Matt Cantoreno. He's 26. He's had, you know, some, some arm issues, but it's two plus pitches, potentially a third plus pitch. Not only could he plug into the rotation if they want to try that, he could be a multi-inning reliever. He could be a Swiss Army knife. He's funky. Menace for them. Um, so that that's another name to watch. I do like it. The Tigers. Look at me. Casey Mize. No, yeah. I, I mean, it, yes, but Jack Flaherty's the answer. It's any of those mid-rotation arms behind Scooble. It is Mize, Manning, Flaherty, Maeda. I could have picked any of them. Yeah. I'm going to pick Casey Mize because he's my favorite, and I have a soft spot for him. But I, like you can go with any of those guys, and I'm not going to bat an eye. I think Mize and Manning, this is the last year where they can like prove that they take a step. I actually give Mize more time because he was dealing with injury. Manning, it's just like, what do we what do we got going on here? Yeah, I'm and I'm really interested to find out. Um, I I was looking at like Reese Olsen as well because I think he's becoming a popular name that Wait, can really make easy. He's looked good. Yeah, that's the thing. So like, I think he's a breakout guy. Correct. I view him as an ex I agree. Guy. I think. Parker Meadows mm -hmm. because of what he brings to this team. So you look at the lineup. I think a lot of guys that can mash, mm -hmm. um, a lot of guys that can swing it in terms of you look at Torkelson, Kerry Carpenter, Colt Keith, uh, how guys can, can hit home runs. He but is, if you think about what he's, can, yeah. I know he's, he's striking. I got to pull up these guys. Yeah. Right. But you look at the lineup, it's mostly power oriented guys. Jake Rogers, it's all home runs. Uh, I think having a guy that's speedy, can steal bags, can play. I mean, Meadows is posting, you know, elite run times, yeah. can play a good center field. Uh, yes, Green can plug into center. I don't think they want He's that. a right fielder. Yeah. So I'm looking at him as like, that's a dynamic option. They're kind of missing that dynamic outfielder outside of Riley Green. Yeah. And again, they don't really want to run him out in center field. I, I really feel like Meadows can fill a lead off and, and dynamic, speedy defense, a little bit of power role that you know that, that they need to, to balance out that lineup uh all right ops for javi bios this spring 25 plate appearances 291 125 dude i've never seen a guy give less of a shit and the wbc was the perfect example of that because 
he actually he gave him a little bit of a shit and he played really well. Yeah, he was the NLCS MVP against good, good pitching. He's good when the games matter. He, yeah. He's one for 22 with 11 punch outs. I mean, he doesn't care. He, he just doesn't care. care. I wish there was more to it because a lot of times there is. With yeah. him, I think it's he doesn't care. Two more teams. Uh, the Kansas City Royals, I want to be the uh, second to last team here. The Royals got... I, I use the word frisky. They got frisky this offseason, and they go and grab Seth Lugo. They go and grab Michael Waka. They gave Bobby Witt a massive extension. They're clearly <clears throat> interested in elevating this young core and giving them the opportunity to play competitive games longer into the season. I think a big part of that could be on the shoulders of Brady Singer. And Brady Singer, for me, is my X Factor. He's a super two guy. So he's in his second of four ARB years. He's got ARB three next year, and then he's got ARB four, his final year of arbitration in 26. They got to make a decision on him at some point very soon. After the 2022 season, I was like, oh, extend him right now, right? He had a low threes in like 150 innings. He looked great. He wasn't walking anybody. Still wasn't walking anybody last year, but the ERA jumped from three and a half to five and a half in the same number of innings, 153 to 159. Here's the difference. And Brady Singer's sinker is really the X factor here. Brady Singer's sinker in 2022 sat 94. Opponents hit 250 against it. They slugged under 400. So good pitch, good primary pitch. In 2023, sinker was down two ticks from 94 to 92. Opponents hit 340. They slugged 550 against it. If Singer gets the sinker back, I think this guy can get back to that two or three that they think he can be. They found their one for now. I yeah. don't know yeah. how. <laughs> I, I don't know if Reagan's is a one or like he's doing this Jake Arietta out of body experience yeah. thing. Um, but they have to find that other controllable two. Yeah. And this is the opportunity for Brady Singer to put himself back on the map. And I think you feel good about Lugo being just a big league solid yeah, starter. You know, walk walk I have no concerns. Yeah. I'm with you. So, I mean, Singer could really be what puts that rotation over the top. I look at the offense because I still think, yeah, it was nice to add Hunter Renfro. But, you know, you look at the lineup, it's it's still it's still a little bit top-heavy in terms of it's Bobby Witt Jr. Um, Salvi Perez, obviously, is another proven guy. But then you look around, it's like, okay, what are you going to get from MJ Melendez? Uh, Hunter Renfro, you kind of know what you're going to get. It's nothing that's going to change your your offense, but it can help. Massey, Michael Garcia, Kyle Isbell. Like, what are you what are you getting from those yeah. guys? Vinny Pascantino for me, like, yes, we know how good he can be. So I think that's what makes him, you know, maybe not the obvious answer. Mm -hmm. But I think they need him to be everything that I think he can be, right? Where I was floating high eight hundred, nine hundred OPS. Yeah. And I still think he can be that. Like, yeah. I really do. Um, I mean, Fangraph's projections even have him at like an eight forty OPS, which is like historically after a year off. yeah yeah and and i mean that says a lot um i i think if if the royals are going to have any chance at being competitive this year i the pitching side has to happen but Vinny pascantino needs to be one of the better for he needs to be tristan casas ask mm -hmm. and i think he can be i think he's better than casas i think he is. if he if be. i have both and i'm sitting here like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about it in terms of like a fantasy baseball perspective. If I've got both sitting there and I'm torn between the two of them, I'm hitting Vinny P. And it's not just because the name is longer in second year. <laughs> he's, a, he's a more well-rounded hitter. Uh, Casas has like the the power that is, is, is hard to find. But yeah, I mean, Vinny walks a ton too and doesn't strike out at all. And, and he's got juice also. Yeah. Let's wrap with the Chicago White Sox. Simple for me. Andrew Vaughn, are you good at baseball? Hmm. Like, I, we need to figure that out this year. We're hitting the point where Vaughn is into arbitration. He's coming off of a career best 0.3 F4 it's, season. He was forced into a corner outfield that's going to dock his war like crazy. It's Schwarber esque. But even then, man, his best WRC plus in his career, do you have it in front of you? No. Um, what do you think it is? He's played three full seasons at this point. And we were sold on this guy being the best college bat in a decade. 105? 113. Okay. But even then, like, <laughs> eh. That's not good. No, not when you're giving zero positional value. Walk rate. This guy had elite play discipline in college. It was like 60 walks to like 15 punch outs in his draft yeah. year. He's been under 6% the last two years. Where does that go? It, 
honest to God, I think it's like infectious <laughs> with the White Sox. I agree. It That's was what I'm saying. Like, how does a guy like Andrew Vaughn, who didn't swing at anything, and when he did swing, he hit the ball out of the ballpark where he hit it in the gap at Berkeley. How do you get to the big leagues and your walk rate, like, shrinks in size 3x? It, bizarre. Bizarre yeah. to me. Um, if this guy can give me that 125 WRC plus that we've been begging for and can play a fine first base and give me a two win season. Yep. I feel good about him moving forward. Yeah, I think that's absolutely huge. And I think it's it's fair to note, you know, he skipped a lot of the development process, but like at this point, you can 3 years you, say you can't use that as an excuse pretty much starting now. Yeah. So, like that that's kind of if, if if he is bad or just subpar this year, I think you got to got to look at it and say the ship has sailed. Yeah. And that that's that's tough. Yeah. So, uh, I'm with you. I think that's the obvious, obvious answer. Outside of him, it's got to be Garrett Crochet. Yes. And and Crochet, you know, moving back to the rotation, if he can stay healthy. Look, it, the, the fact that the White Sox were able to get Thorpe and Iriarte is huge because yep. if you look at 2025 now, there's not a lot of options that you can say, okay, that guy's going to be in the rotation. Yep. Um, if Crochet can grab a spot for them, not they, they need a lefty first of all because Noah Schultz is, is a ways away, mm-hmm. so it gives him a lefty. You know, we'll see if Jake Eater can can factor in and all that good stuff. But if Crochet, twenty four years old, an eleventh overall pick, yeah, can can pitch like we've seen him. It's so far the spring and things like that. I, I think that changes a lot, not only for the the White Sox this season to be a little bit more competitive than than we thought, but also just changes the outlook for their franchise when you have you know a a, a really exciting potential middle rotation even better than that type of of left-handed starter for you that just they just sorely need guys that you can sharpie yes. into the rotation yes. for the next couple of years instead of just dry a race and get ready to wipe that off when you either dfm or or dump them for for a lottery ticket prospect so crochet has been starting game so he's been seeing big leaguers the entirety of this big league spring it's not like he's seeing double a lineups garrett crochet has thrown six innings five hits no runs nine punch outs no walks in six innings. I'm a big fan of that. We saw him punch out Shohei Otani. He went like viral for that, right? First Dodger AB for Otani. Crochet punches him looking after making him look silly on a slider too. Um, yeah, like moving far in 2025, if you can watch an assortment of Crochet, Nestrini, Thorpe, and Iriarte, and you hope that, you know, Schultz is farther along in his development, and then you got a Peyton Paulette a little bit farther on in his development, and Eater, right? What do you have in Eater? Shit, does Darren Schuster have a bounce back in him? Does Soroka have a bounce back in him? There are, that is watchable. Yes. Right now, it's not watchable, no. but 2025 can become very watchable very yes. quickly. It could be one of the more fun young rotations in baseball. Yes. Yes. I mean, Crochet, Iriarte, and Thorpe. And who would they be throwing to? They'd be throwing to Edgar Carroll, which yeah. is fun, too. I mean, the White Sox, I, I'll, I'll be excited to watch that in 25. And the White Sox fans are like, oh, we heard this last time with the last young group. Yeah. yeah, what's the alternative? Yeah. It was also really fun. It was fun. It was it fun until it wasn't. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It turned out that they just all had not the best, uh, mm-hmm. I would say, personalities to gel in a clubhouse, right? So, And then also each had their own injury issues and, yeah. and a litany of things that we could talk about probably for a full episode, but y- y- there's no other option other than to do it over again. And uh, I-, I do think that if crochet can solidify himself, you start to feel pretty good about the future of the pitching, which I mean, we haven't been able to say that for a long time and, and, and to have Schultz then coming in behind them and you-, you figure that they might be able to go get another arm here or there with, with some of the trades that they might make. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how they draft and things like that. They're going to have another, you know, high draft pick for the next couple of years. All of a sudden, it could start to come together. But something about Crochet solidifying himself just, again, makes the team much better and more watchable this year. Like That's the one thing that the White Sox really need, too, is, oh, Crochet's on the bump today? I'll watch. Yeah, There are probably so many White Sox fans that just barely want to watch this coming season, and I don't blame them. But every time Crochet is on the bump, oh, let me throw that on. Like, I went through that with the Marlins. There was days where just if 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 a certain pitcher was on the bump, okay, great, I'm throwing it on. Like, when Sandy was, was really doing yeah, his yeah. thing, okay, I'm going to throw that on. But, you know, I don't think people are going to want to see Michael Kopech throw that often unless he's you yeah, know, just crazy. coming back. I, yeah. Eric Fetty, like, I don't think you're – He doesn't have sex appeal. You're not, you're not circling that on the calendar. Yeah, it, it's like the Jesse Schulten starts from last year. I'm like, oh, I'm yeah, good. Chris Flexen, like, I'm I'm good. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a big part of it as well. Yeah, 100%. 
This has been the Just Baseball Show. Uh, stay locked on all of our social media channels because we're going to be doing a lot of spring breakout stuff this weekend. Our plan right now, it's 1022 a.m. in uh, the Fort Lauderdale area. So we're going to go from Fort Lauderdale. We're going to go drive to Bradenton. Then we're going to drive back to Port St. Lucie for Friday. That's going to be Nats Mets. Mm -hmm. Then I can bring is, is O's or, or is uh, Pirates O's. That's Skeens and Holiday. And then we've got Nats Mets, which will be Cruz, Wood, Hassel, House, all those guys. Yeah. And Jet, Jet Williams, Williams, Acuna, all Drew that. Gilbert. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. And then we go to Fort Myers on Saturday for Ray's Twins, which will also be great. And then we wrap up uh, likely in Jupiter with Astros Cardinals. So a lot of stuff going on. Uh, be locked on all our social. Again, a lot of great editorial stuff going on. Yeah. Arms right up on the prospect return for Dylan Cease is in the episode description. Go read that. And uh, did you can match us with the hoodies? Yeah, yeah just so hopefully yours comes in uh, looking a little bit different than than uh, Jack's mic right now, the mic flag. Uh, oh, I didn't even notice. I didn't oh want to tell God. you until the end of the episode because I didn't want it to be one of those things that just distracts the people on YouTube and they just keep looking at the fact that you put the mic flag on upside down. But sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm sure that we really should restart the. Episode. We should let's just run it back. Let's start over. Okay, welcome to just baseball. Okay. All right, we still didn't flip the mic flag. Oh yeah, good point. All right, we'll talk to you guys on Monday.